Hi guys, welcome to my next video and this is going to be going over the assembly of the Cruiser i3 Mark II. So I have just built my one, I uh, got it all in black and I think maybe orange black would look better but I thought my girlfriend would kill me if I started building this thing as some day glow orange all around it. But the black looks black looks not not too bad. Um, but anyway, I obviously took a little bit longer than um, no, then you should have, I guess. Uh, did a couple of things wrong, nothing too major, but it just it's, it's very fiddly. There's very fiddly parts, and things that took me 10 minutes or 5 minutes end up taking me 20, 30 minutes, something like this. Um, so I'm going to just go through here because I've taken down a load of notes and I have some steps of things that uh, would be handy if someone had told me whilst I was doing it. Um, so if you know, especially if it's your first printer you're building. Um, is a little bit of a learning curve with it because you build everything from scratch. So I'm going to start here with the introduction. Um, so all the tools that are required, it says this is what you get in the kit when you buy it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now I did see people recommending that you have a screwdriver with the anarchy fitting, so a hex screwdriver. I looked to buy one before I was going to build my kit and ended up just sticking with the anarchies and that actually dramatically lengthens the time to do it. I mean, I reckon if you have a screwdriver with a hex end, you, you're seriously going to cut some time because it's so much easier. Especially with bit parts where you can just about fit the Allen key in there and you only get into, say, you know, half rotation, a 90 degree rotation, and then you have to take it off, put it back in, do another quarter turn, you know, stuff like this. So um, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, the good thing is everything's labelled and if you're not sure about the screw, so got a uh, M310 there and M312 there, there's two millimeters difference. Can be hard and can easily get them mixed up, and then you might not bite the thread you're trying to get the screw to, and it can cause problems down the line. So it's always I always like to just measure one up. Say you need to get five of these out, just measure one, and then get the other five that line up next to it, so you know you've got the right ones. The another big part was the spares bag, and the spares bag had a lot of spare stuff in there. Um, including, um, oh, you know what? I did not even know there were spare bearings in here. That is awesome. I definitely would have used one of those. Um, and also a pulley, which I did not even realise because I didn't go through the spares. So my pulley, I actually put one on and I had it the wrong way around. When I tried to get it off, it, I don't know if it bent or somehow, but I just could not get it off and get it back on. I, I mean, I did, uh, sorry, I did eventually, but I literally had to leave it with all my strength using pliers. Um, it was just really weird because it slid on fine, which will not come back off again. So, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I'm a bit of an idiot for not actually looking in these spares as much as I should. And on my wire bed, one of the bearings basically, you have two bearings on one side and then one bearing on the other side. Now, the one bearing, there's quite a lot of play there. So, if I had realised there was more bearings here, I definitely would have switched out a few different bearings and just tried to get one with a bit of a tighter fit because I know the toler tolerances aren't always perfect on there. Okay, so I'm going to skip past this bit. This just basically shows some things. A uh, tip here, if you need to put a nut into a deep crevice, deep hole like that, a good way to do it is to get a screw like this. Tap it, um, sorry, screw it into the nut just a couple of turns. Bury that down into the groove there. And then just unscrew the screw and you have sorted. The nut is in there and all ready to go. Okay, and this just shows some of the parts and stuff. So let's go on to the first part, which is the wire axis assembly. So I'm going to get my notes up here as well. So bear with me one second. Okay. So uh, first off, you've just got all the printed parts. Where are we? Oh, my bad. On the wrong bit. There we are. That picture there. So these are all the printed parts that are in the bag for the wire axis assembly. Um, I like to just empty everything and just literally just, I, what I did was just place them, how I had them here, just to keep everything ready to go. So, the first one is the assemble the Y axis rods. Now, the one thing it does know is here is your 100mm distance between a washer, after counter and the Y axis corner. So, what that's, that is saying is this picture here, so from that bit there to the, I counted it as just after that washer, so as that washer ends. And if we go to this picture, you can see it's the same on that side, it just hasn't got the black thing, so it should be going to there. Now, 
I did actually do it to 100 millimeters exactly. Some a lot of people said they did it 101, 102. Some even said 103, 104. I left it as what it said to 100, and uh, so far it seems to have worked out fine for me. So see how you do with that. Um, and just remember these nuts here, they don't need to be tight right now. Um, and these ones, I tried. Let's get, get to the end here. I tried not to leave too much thread showing on the back here. Only I don't know two millimeters maybe. Um, but barely anything, so I have got room to tighten that up and move that if needed. And the main thing is, don't forget the washers when you thread these on because you've got to thread these on a little way, it'll be annoying if you have to redo it again. But they can, these all can be adjusted later on. So if you don't get the exact measurement now, not too important, you can do it later. So, step four. So, I'll read through my notes. So, this piece here, this was actually too tight for me. I had to thread one rod all the way on so actually screw it on in the screw it into the hole here and then this one has one hole there one hole there i couldn't actually just slide it over these which became a bit of a nightmare and i actually had a nut that wouldn't go on properly and I, in fact i had two nuts in this bag that wouldn't go on properly they were just a bit bent or something like this so i had to use two from the spares and i think that's the only time i used the spares bag full stop um but one thing i found if you can't slide this on but you can thread it on, thread it on, and what I did, I actually had to move this. So it says here, where are we? Um, why rotor mount should be somewhere in the middle of the threaded rod. The precise, like that, the precise position doesn't matter at this time. Now it actually does matter because it's awkward to move it later on. But you may not know exactly where that position will be just yet. But the motor attaches to this, and the shaft comes over here and the uh, pulley is around here so this bit should be in the center which means you can move this slightly over that way and then get the pulley bit here into the center and that is because the belt will be coming straight down towards the other ones of these two rods and you want that belt as straight as possible I didn't actually have mine as straight as possible and the wire bit the motors couldn't power it enough to get to the end stop and also the end stop at first couldn't actually be triggered so I had to tighten these bolts and loosen them ones and what I did because <coughs> it's just PLA it meant that by moving these bolts with a spanner it was enough to push this down even though I couldn't loosely move it using the bolts was enough to kind of just squash it down slightly so I was able to adjust that in the end <coughs> so if I was you just make this a little bit over this way and try and get this bit here more in the centre and it will save you a bit of time later okay let's go on to the next one so this one is the same thing we just add in this one now this one again it says the precise position doesn't matter at this time actually that you want in the middle so try and get that pretty much in the middle as, as exact as possible but again you can move that later by just tightening one bolt and loosening another so it's no big deal just don't forget the washers okay so here we go now you can see this one is completely opposite that one so what we need is that one in the center and I'm not sure we're going to be able to zoom in too much. Uh, in fact, if I do this and zoom in, there we go. So you, that bit there, you want that bit in the center and this bit will be slightly off. Um, yeah, let's go back to here. Okay, go down. What have we got for seven and eight? Um, so here, both pictures show you so this one's got this part at uh, this side of the stand that one's got the idler um, and what that actually I was like what which one wanted to do it but this is just to get the frame square you're not actually putting them in place yet so don't worry about it too much and you they should slot in there not too difficult if they do then it's a bit of a kind of parallelogram and it isn't quite straight so um, all you do is just as it says amend the nuts get that as straight as possible not really too much to it uh, the length of rods you have some short ones some mediums and long ones best thing put them next to each other that way you don't need to measure the rods you just choose the medium sized ones okay so now on step 10 and this is where um, you have to put the rods there that bit there into these little slots here now this is where you didn't want too much showing on the end of the uh, those threaded rods here 
Um, with my one, that rod fitted in perfect. This one had about a millimeter of play. So all I did was just tighten the bolt on one side and the other side by just like half a turn and that was enough to get them in there nicely. And you kind of push them in and they will stay in place. Quite an easy little step to do and very easy to adjust if needed to. Okay, this part, this is the kind of X carriage uh, that holds the Y axis. Uh, it points out this little dot here. Now there's a lot of people that flip this over and add the bearings to the wrong side and have to retake it apart um, much nearer the end. So make sure you get this bit done correctly. And then add the bearings. So um, we can see this bit's on there. Okay, so when you're adding the bearings, you want to add them so one of the line of balls is on the bottom like this. Um, obviously, unless you've swapped the bearings out for uh, dry lin linear bearings, then it doesn't matter. Um, and I think I've written on my notes. Yep, don't, just don't tighten the zip ties until you get them perfect like that. And also, bring them towards the center. So you'll see where they got them. So here you're just putting the zip ties in, but here, if we can actually get to them, Basically, you want these two bearings nearer each other rather than really far apart. Um, but once these bearings are on, you're all ready to go to the next step. And also, as you can see in this picture just here, the little spot here, so the bed's been flipped over, and that spot's on that side, and then the bearings are on the other side. So, what that means is with that spot here on the side you're looking at, that's where you put the bearings and then you flip it over so the bearings are on the bottom. Now it's important to tie the zip ties, if we go back up here, it's important to do them so they're like this and then trim them off and they won't catch on anything. So that is actually quite a major thing to do. I had to uh, take my zip ties off and redo them to, uh, to make sure I got them done properly. Um, here we put in the kind of middle belt holder. Um, this part, it says the screws may not thread it in place and keep it there. Mine actually did, they kind of could thread through the whole X carriage fine, but you may have to put bolts on the other side. And I think it shows that in. Um, where does it say that? Um, okay, uh, I think it mentions it's further down the line, but put the screws in anyway. There we go, that's a better picture like that. Some people have to put bolts on the other side just to keep them in place from the spares bag. Okay, step 16. So here we're just inserting the rods. The single bearing may have a little bit more play. I mean, once everything's in place with the double bearings there, it should be sorted. But it's nice just to make sure that that bearing is tight as possible and there's no play with the zip tie so the bearing can't move or anything and you could also swap out, swap out this bearing for a couple of the spares in the spares bag and just see if you can get one with even less tolerance okay let's keep going ah here we are so here we just attach the pulley system here the little pulley in the center of that and just tighten it, don't tighten it too much so that the two orange tabs come together and stop it from spinning freely because we need the belt to run around that. And here we are with the motor. Uh, now when you add this in, you actually don't need to worry about doing this too tightly yet because you can do one screw, but the other screw, don't worry about it too tightly because you're actually going to be loosening these and letting the motor come out after when you add the belt on. So where it says tighten the motor to gently, you don't need to worry about tightening it just yet and here we have the end stop so also you just add the end stop make sure it aligns perfectly and that is pretty easy to do end stop on with the wires going round okay and here we just have so which bit was this bit uh, the zip ties just adding the zip ties and they're easy to do and 24 so there's those nuts I was talking about on the wire belt holder uh, where that screws into the middle sometimes some people don't get a bite on the actual plate so they put the little nuts there to hold them in place I didn't need to do that but you may need to 
Okay, this is the fiddly pop, and it you know it can be a little uh, a little thumb soreness inducing. Um, basically, I had a decent amount of excess in my belt. If I go to this picture, you just fold it over. Best thing is to fold it over, slot this bit in first, and then just push that bit onto that little loop there, as you can see on the next one like that. Now, if you have a little bit of excess like this, that's fine because you want the belt as tight as possible and there's not really any way to tighten them the only way to do it is when you loosen the motor and then you tighten the motor back up into place not the best way of doing it okay so this putty here this is what I actually did wrong originally I put it on the other way because I thought I couldn't get my belt in the middle um, and then when I tried to remove it it was a nightmare so I recommend putting it on this way because again you need this idler here this putty shall I say in the center of these rods here so you run the belt around there and this is why I said don't worry about tightening the motor because here we undo the screw and we rotate the motor out because we want a little bit of slack so we can get the belt around there and we'll tighten that back up in a moment so we just do the same again as before with the belt get some excess and you want it quite tight already okay here we are so as you can see you just got to squeeze that together you can already see from here it looks quite tight and now we want to tighten it even more and that's by putting the motor back into place. So you get maybe half a centimetre, maybe a centimetre of play when you loosen that screw and when you tighten it back in. Basically that tightens the belt. And as it says here, let's highlight that a bit better. Yeah, well you can see where I'm going. Um, it should ping like a music string and mine actually does as well. So it makes a nice kind of dong, um, depending on where you ping it, but it's very tight. Um, and that's exactly what you want because you don't want it skipping any steps. Okay, again just make sure the belt is completely straight. Like I said, mine wasn't and that's why my plate couldn't actually get to the end stop in the end. Um, but once it's straight, you should be able to calibrate things a lot better. This just shows the belt. Let's just tighten the screw with the pulley. Some cable management. And this one, leveling the y-axis, all you have to do is place it on a flat surface and hope there's no rocking. If there is, then you may just adjust the nuts until you sort that out. Easy. And add some felt pads, which, to be honest, do nothing because I had mine on a hard surface and it was ridiculous, the sound. So now I have it on my carpet and it's a lot quieter, but on any hard surface, it's like, an, it's like the biggest amp you've ever heard. Anyway, that Y axis is all done. So let's go to the X axis. I'm gonna have a sip of my tea. Okay, now this one was a hell of a lot quicker. And you can see only 19 steps compared to about 39. In the last one, only three, thin, three printed parts here as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have the longest rods also. And we also have some more bearings. Okay, so start the bearings in, that was easy to do. Step five. Okay, oh, also, if you note here, there's a little gap there for the bearings, so don't be afraid to push them in if they're quite tight because this will actually flex just a tiny bit and let the bearings go in nicely. A uh, yeah, good design there. Okay, this bit can be a little bit awkward to get the rods in for some people uh, I don't think mine fitted too bad but you may have to get a little wooden mallet out give them a little hammer get them in place step seven here we've got the idler the little pulley there and again once you get that in you don't need to tighten it too much it just should spin freely 
Uh, the zip tires is important, they go the right way around. So just notice the kind of flat side is here with a little tab sticking out that way. And just do those zip ties up around the bearings. Obviously do them as tight as possible, cut them because you don't want any looseness and, and minimize the vibration as much as possible. Because the quicker something go, it will build up that vibration and it will get stiffer to, to move as well. And that's when it may skip steps also. Okay, this one, you have put the motor in. But again, like the last time with the Y-axis, you actually have to loosen this motor again. So I think you have to take off this screw and this screw, the two top ones, and let it, the motor kind of fall down slightly so you can loosen it and get the belt on. So again, don't worry about tightening them just yet. Okay. And are we, I think we're almost done with the X-axis actually. Uh, where are we? Oh, by the way, take note of the position of the wires because it's a nightmare if you have to start taking things off. Putting them back on, it does my head in. And with the pulley on the motor, just make sure that's on correctly. End stop is easy. It, it, it lines up with the holes anyway, so you have no problem there. But what you can do also is just make sure that the X axis here clicks that as it says in this bit here. There we go, all good. And there you go, they're going along, clicks nicely, get a nice little sound, and a decent end stop with a little button there. Not like little metal kind of flaps like I see on some where I never trust it because I feel like when you turn squeeze them in, they always click in a slight different position. And then just some cable management and cable wrapping, which makes the whole thing look nicer. Except one thing I would say is once you have the cable wrapping out of the extruder, it actually hangs and sits on the bed which I really don't like because if you were to print different STLs on one kind of print and you print the front one and then the back one or the back one and then the front one then it's just going to drag and hit the other one so I'm not too sure about that anyway x-axis is all done um, a really quick process that one so not too bad at all and we'll go on to the z-axis okay this one I thought would be really easy um, in fact, it was. I'm thinking of the extruder. Yeah, so that actually isn't too bad. Got the few parts there. So let's have a look at the first kind of step for this note. Okay, these ones. Uh, the bearings might be quite tight to go in, but if you push hard, there's a gap to let the printed part flex. Uh, oh, sorry, that was on the X axis I'm reading that from. Where I'm on the Z axis. Here we are. So screw them in, put the motors in, tighten the Z motors, these obviously need to be as tight as possible because you don't want any play in the Z axis, you don't want any Z wobble because it will mess up your perimeters. Okay, time to place the trapezoid thingies. As you can see they just go there. Okay, number nine, the shortest rods, choose those, and ten pairing the Z rods so these were a nightmare because they didn't fit at all they have little chamfered edges so they slot in by about a millimeter and then I couldn't get them in so what I had to do was put it on the flat surface raise this 90 degrees upwards so it was resting on the motor because the motor is actually a bit higher than the bottom of this uh, frame I guess I should say um, so what I did I did that on the edge of a table or the countertop and then hammered the rod in with a mallet and a couple of taps of that and it went in actually fine after that so it was a bit scary, it was always scary when you got to fall something but it was better than having to grind out any of that and then risk it being a bit loose and again having Z wobble so it's not too bad if you manage to hit the rod in and 11 so here we just turn the lead screws here turn each one to bring the x-axis down and it doesn't actually matter if they're not perfect. It says here, insert axis very carefully, perfectly in axis with the bearings and with minimal force. So you don't want to bend them or muck them up by doing them too out of sync, like this one down there and that one up there. Doing them pretty much the same. You don't need too many turns to get it down, but eventually when you go to calibrate, it will automatically send both set axes to the top so you know you've got it level. Okay, again, I had to hammer these parts in. Here we are, I had to hammer them in and just got them sitting flush there now 
so it wasn't too hard it did help to have someone hold it whilst I hit it though okay and here just doing some basic steps with the cable management put the uh, frame in place again with the belts this you've done this already before it says here note that there is no belt going out of the X carriage it's important so like no excess stuff there um, I actually had a decent amount of excess and it if I didn't I wouldn't have got the belt as tight as I needed to so you can always take it out put it back in if you need to add some more excess so it's not too important that bit and here we are now now one thing I did notice is the bottom of this kind of rubs along here <coughs> but uh, we'll see if that becomes a problem or not I was a bit surprised it did do that um, I'm not sure if it's meant to do that but it's coming straight along so I'm a bit wary but I haven't heard anyone else complain about that so notice you know leave me comments if your one does that as well just realize how much this looks like a face with the eyes and the nose and the mouth and like a moustache or something it's creeping me out a bit I might have to scroll down okay as I mentioned before you've got to loosen this now we built this in the x-axis and this is to get the belt tighter in a moment as we add the next flat bit on now you want enough excess that is relatively tight already and then when you tighten the motor again you want that as tight as possible and again you should get that nice little ping on the belts and if you get a proper ping with almost like a guitar string like a dong then you know you've done it right and actually I think it says um, it should, I think it says here the belt shouldn't be tight at the moment as you can see but to be honest it should be pretty tight because like I said the only way to tighten it is with this and there's not much play from just moving it on this little axis here back into place so you want it quite tight should actually take a little bit of force as well to push that motor back okay so now we tighten these two little screws here literally have no idea what they were for I didn't see they closed any gap around this rod or anything it says gently tighten both screws until slight force is applied on smooth rods on both smooth rods did not see how it did that in the slightest but I may have missed some groove there or something I didn't see but it doesn't seem to affect anything and remember the z-axis is moving so slowly that it shouldn't matter also and we're all done so onto the extruder assembly <coughs> Have a sip of drink a second. Okay. Now this one I found the most fiddly, or almost the most fiddly. Maybe more fiddly than the electronics as it goes. Okay, so square nuts. You have to put these square nuts in here. Uh, where's the big shot? There you go. Um, I think it's that one there. Yep. You don't actually need them for ages yet. So if they keep falling out, honestly, just put them aside don't worry about trying to keep them in there for now one X nut is uh, this one here now this one is a nightmare as well it doesn't go in very fast so it falls out and again you don't need that until you put the other casing on when you've got the whole nozzle or the whole hot end should I say in place um, so if that falls out just leave it for a second and I think there is a deep one to put in nope just a side one there Yeah, no problem so step four now I had to push the nozzle quite hard to get the Teflon tube through the hole so let's have a look the Teflon tube is on the end there which I think is the Teflon tube if I've got that right um, and you start in like this and you have to push quite hard and it kind of thonks into place not necessarily click but a little kind of just, it just suddenly clicks almost clicks into place and on this side here you just it'll pretty much be flush with that bit there and it's a, a nice feeling and you know when it is in place now one thing I did do is make sure that this bit was parallel with the plastic as well I didn't want the nozzle at an angle or anything like that okay so here we need to push that nut all the way in so it's quite deep there because you need the other screw to um, bite into it so I'm just going to zoom in 
here. So it has to goes all the way down there. So the best way was that method I said right at the beginning, where you screw a screw into it, put it all the way in, and then unscrew it. Uh, there we go, and it explains that method now. So the extruder cover, this is where you put the cover on place. So add the two screws in, then stick it on. And this is where I said there was a nut that almost falls out. Um, and this also bites into that top square nut there. So you have that one in place again now. But see what I mean? You didn't need it until these steps. And they just keep falling out. So you put that one in now. And there's another one in that hole there. And again, that one isn't actually used for a little bit. Let's move on. Some simple steps. Um, number nine. Put this on, and that bit's a little bit loose, so that can move. You'll bring that down in a second. Number ten. So I said, probably this bit is uh, really, really important. Uh, if not, you can muck up and call major jams later. You basically want this bit right in line with that as much as possible. So as it says there, make sure you do that. Just a couple of nuts and stuff there. And step 12, the bearing will swing smoothly in there. So you can spin it and it'll be perfect. The plastic rod, just push that in. Okay, two little springs here. They're used to control the tension on the filament. Um, so I did it exactly to what they said, 13 millimeters and so far it seems perfect with my test prints so I'm pretty happy with that and then just adding the fan pretty simple procedure get that in place <coughs> my back left screw there actually wouldn't bite too well um, but these screws are in tightly it doesn't cause any vibration with the fan and it, it does go in quite a bit it just I feel like maybe I could have done with using a nut, a screw that had an extra couple of millimetres in it. Okay, that's the Pinder Probe with the two nuts there. So, with the Pinder Probe, remember to have one bolt on this side and one bolt on that side. So you have to take one bolt off, slot it through and then add the other bolt like that. And what I did with mine, um, I had got it, so let's look into this close up picture. I pretty much did exactly what it said there. And the nozzle, you can just see the nozzle there. So if I zoom in here, there you go. So I had the nozzle just past the uh, probe. So if the probe is there, if you were looking, I don't think we're looking directly side on now, but if you're looking directly side on, the nozzle was just in front of it, but only by about one millimetre, because I knew that the probe doesn't actually touch the bed, it stops right near it. Um, if it's before it, that's fine, the nozzle won't hit the bed, because it will stop before when the probe gets near there. If the nozzle is too, f if the, the probe is too far back, say here, when you first go to calibrate, it will go, and the nozzle will slam into the bed, and can cause some damage to your PEI sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, drink in a minute. Okay, so mounting the fan. One main point here, which I mucked up on, is the wires from the motor should go behind that fan as well in this little groove there. Now, I didn't have that, I had them going over there because I did not even notice this. And that meant when I had all this in place, when I moved it, it couldn't hit the end stop because the wires were in the way and it just hit the side of the whole Z frame. So that became a bit of a nightmare. Okay, yeah, there we go, just tightening that. We screw this on now and it all becomes part of the X axis. Cable management. And the wires, they might not stay in the groove down there, this one and that one, but once you get a zip tie on them and the, um, over the plastic overlay stuff, then it will be fine. Okay, this is the filament. So uh, right at the beginning, you have two, um, is it nylon? Yeah, two pieces of nylon filament, three millimeters. Um, it says about 50 centimeters long, I had two. One about 21, about 30. 
so I just or oh, this might be the 50 centimeter one and then there's another 30 centimeter one something like that uh, but yeah just push this in or snip it into a fine point and then you can push it through just like when you load filament and you snip it into a sharp point <coughs> excuse me and here um, when it says the cable so that sorry insert zip tie a longer one in the package in the right side of the axe carriage so that cables from the extruder motor and the fan are below zip tie and held in place it actually means next to so you insert the zip tie like this and it means that the fan, the cables here are next to it so when it comes back up like that it will actually go underneath here go back up and around there so they're all next to it not actually below it but next to it and you can see there goes around and loops them into place that they can push up into there depending on what option you got I didn't have this bit so I just had the plain wires okay and there was a tiny little zip tie on my wires here which I just cut off but I had to be careful because there was no it wasn't very loose it was very tight so I had to be caref careful to cut that without damaging any of the wires and if we go down I also add an extra zip tie and what I did as well I added I tried to add another zip tie because where you'll see in a minute these wires they they come down and that's the ones again that are hitting the bed so I prefer them to stick a bit higher I think this is quite a major problem to be fair and I'm surprised no one's highlighted it already and we go to 36 so here it says to add this on to protect the probe and you have to do that in a I think in ABS or PET G or something like that. Now that's because the heat from the hot end and the nozzle could melt the PLA and it messed that right up. Uh, I've heard people complain that this file here actually isn't threaded or isn't threaded properly so it doesn't screw on. But there are lots of other variations on Thingiverse that should work fine. Or you could design one that will clip on there and then hang down and go around that. So you'll have that done perfectly. Um, I actually still need to do mine. Uh, but I need to buy a whole roll of filament to be able to do that or maybe I'll try buying a sample filament from somewhere and then using that to print that <coughs> okay so here's the over wrap thing, spiral wrap and the zip tires so one thing to note after I've all zip tied this and everything I actually zip tied this with a zip tie that went round this zip tie that was already here to this and just pulled it to the left slightly. The reason being, when the X carriage goes over here to the end stop, these wires here push against the frame. The frame really should have a cutout. I'm not sure why it doesn't, but because of that, it can have a little bit of trouble getting to the end stop. Now, with this pulled to the left, you don't really need to worry about it going over to this side because a lot of time when I go all the way over, but to this side here when it needs to hit the end stop all the time is a bit annoying so you don't want the motors to have to try too hard and then again any steps being skipped or anything like that so I do recommend having an extra zip tie around here onto here and just putting this slightly to the left and even better would be have one holding it upwards slightly as well again to stop this spiral wrap from touching the bed And we are pretty much all done there. And so far, look, almost the printer. So next one, LCD assembly. <coughs> now this is pretty quick. 12 steps, so it's nice to have an easy one for once. Um, so these, forget about these bits for the here, because they're just for cable management, so keep them aside for now. Um, when you clip these on, I found it easier just to do it vertically. So put that on the ground, slot this in, and then push them on okay so remember to move the protective plastic from the actual screen before putting it on here because once it's all in place I don't think you ever could be bothered to unscrew it and redo that and you have to press quite firmly to get this little click here if I zoom into that there's a little knob there, little tab you push the LCD ball down to click under that it's a bit scary because you never want to push on one hard, but it doesn't take too much force to do it. 
Okay, the screws in place. I actually had to screw quite a bit to get my, where are we here? I want so I had to get this down. It seemed like it wasn't biting or wasn't going, so I had to push quite hard, but didn't seem to cause any damage, so don't be too worried about pushing quite hard. And then the knob goes on. The knob wouldn't actually go on all the way. It's kind of pressed on. I was scared about pressing it too hard, but there's a little bit of gap, but it's on enough that it turns perfectly. So as long as yours does the same, it will be absolutely fine. So we just plug these in, and you see they got the lines. I'm going to tell you which is which. Run the cables through there, and we are almost done. Some zip ties. These are actually really fiddly for me. I had two holes there, and two holes there, and two holes there, and that meant I could actually use the zip ties around them rather than around this big hole here. And then we just guide this along. And that is it, all done. Pretty easy step. Next, PSU and heat bed assembly. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's have one more sip of tea, or cold tea now. Ugh, very cold tea. Okay, now these two bits are actually the spool holder bits, so you don't need these till right at the end, to be honest, until you're literally about to do your printing. So you can actually leave them aside for now. My uh, PSU and everything was all already assembled. <coughs> so I'll skip down here. We obviously put those in and screw in the. Well, again, I was already done with this, I didn't need to worry about it too much. But we did have to screw the whole thing into here. So I'll skip down to here. And this bit, um, so I am obviously in UK, so I'm 220 volt. The switch isn't actually here, so it's a bit misleading. It makes you think you can look in here and see it, but you actually have to look through this bit here, this grill grate up here. Look down there, and then you can see the switch. These two nuts. Now you can take these off. I didn't have them in the first place. And that was the wire belt holder. Okay, assembling the heat bed. Now these should fit all perfectly, <coughs> if they don't or they're tiny bit out on one of them, like a millimetre out, almost always the case is the kind of X carriage for the Y bed, where you put the bearings on, is the wrong way around. Check that again, that you've got that little groove on the bottom, because if you've got that wrong you need to redo the bearings and flip it all over, and that's the reason why, otherwise they should line up perfectly, and a lot of people get that bit wrong. Okay, here. Now this bit was a bit of a nightmare for me. Um, so the two screws you put in here, there's two little nuts. It won't show on here, but on the underside of this heat bed, um, similar to these ones there. Now there's two in the middle, so one, two, on the heat bed, and you should have no gap between those two kind of nuts and the X carriage. Now mine had about a millimeter gap on each, and it wouldn't bite enough to put it closer. Um, and I could have used longer screws longer screws from the spares, that's what I recommend. But after all this, it does do mesh bed leveling. And I've been doing some prints and it's still perfect. So if there is a tiny gap and you're worried about it, don't matter, it prints fine, doesn't cause any errors. Okay, this is just adding the protective covers now for the thermistor cables and heating cables. So, filament again, that's the other filament we had, the other nylon filament. Just slot that in again, that is just for a bit of cable management. And here, if you are wondering where the wire for the, I think it's the, the mister in the middle of the heat bed goes, it actually just carries on underneath because there's a gap with these nuts here. So it carries on, on underneath the heat bed, and then once you get to here, that's where the spiral wrap will go on, as you can see. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Okay, now here, this is just to make sure the X carriage is all in line. Uh, the best thing to do is actually just move the bed so the lines are quite close to these rods. They look completely vertically, as Prusa explains, and hopefully you should have things perfectly there. Otherwise, X Y carriage may be slightly out, and you will just need to adjust that 
like this and these nuts so just to make sure it's perpendicular with this frame and last finish you're touching touches now you put those little things on but again you don't need them yet because you're not going to be printing it you've got the electronics to set up so you can just hold them and wait till the end next one electronics assembly and almost done okay these two housings they're quite flimsy actually um, it's a bit worrying but you'll see when you come to do it okay so make sure you get the right mounting holes here And when you attach it, make sure you get the wires from the X motor and end stop through that little gap there. Because I didn't do that, so I had to unscrew this and get it back on. And unscrewing this is a bit of a nightmare, especially up here, because there's not much room to get that stupid little Allen key in. Hence why the screwdriver would have been a hell of a lot easier. This bit took me forever, just because to tighten this was so awkward. Okay, and again, make sure you get the right hole there. So, preparing the electronics and the serial port here will actually point upwards. So, when once it goes in, that serial port there is pointing up towards the ceiling. Connecting the electronics. So, the wire, the motor wires. If you're worried at first, they all have little tabs on them, which tell you little X or Y or Z so you know which you're putting in which and as you can see with the motors it goes X, Y, Z and with the end stops it goes X, Y and then the Pinder probe which is basically the Z end stop will actually go underneath it as well so they go in the same logic <coughs> um, I wouldn't really recommend doing this bit just yet where you put this cable in place because it means that there's wires in here in the way when you're trying to set them up when you're trying to plug them in shall I say so what I would recommend doing is plugging them in and then kind of zip tying this in place and pushing that filament in okay and let's go down to the next one well here also, so this cable is from the extruder and again that's the one I said was touching the print bed so I would recommend another zip tie, no really any pictures here um, another zip tie just to kind of pull that up somehow because again you don't want it laying on the bed too much as you can see here it goes up there and then down but really it should just come flat so it's a little bit annoying um, and there is actually it might be this one sorry yeah so there's a hole there so you can put a zip tie through that hole and get it around there and just you know just prompt that prop it a little bit up <coughs> and remember these cases are quite flimsy so when you're screwing it on and you're pushing the wires in just be careful that if you push too hard you could actually snap it and here we are putting the pinna probe in so the pinna probe is the only one with a black wire there so you'll easily be able to identify that and the electronics here remember the fan with a little red wire at the top I'm guessing if you do that wrong and put it the wrong way round again remember the serial port is facing upwards I'm guessing that means the fan will spin the wrong way and then that will cause all the sort of issues but I guess with heat creep things like that um, and jams and general nightmares so these electronics, these are for the LCD screen and just remember that red side on each one should be facing upwards towards the serial mount. So here the red bit should be on this side and that side is so facing upwards. And that's an easy way to get them in no problem and know which way you're doing it. And I think we're pretty much done. Just putting the uh, little hinge in for the cover put that cover on, careful not to pinch any wires but there's a gap at the bottom to let everything out so try and do that with as much excess as possible because it will save any wires getting squashed out of terminals and mucking up and there, boom, almost there so I think we have just actually assembled it so just a few notes for the pre-flight check so the self-test, that will 
basically it tests the fans in order side fan front fan you click if they're spinning or not in fact let's click on the pre-flight check the video great video to watch really helps you out um, ah, so it doesn't really go into any details here but <coughs> excuse me so I had for example my self test it said motor wire and end stop Z so that meant there was a problem with the motor the wire motor and the end stop for the Z so I was like what there is no Z end stop obviously I thought that means the pinder probe so what I had was my nozzle right down near the bed so the pinder probe was being um, triggered so what I did was raise the Z axis up so the pinder probe wasn't being triggered that solved that problem but then the wire bed I had to push really hard to get it to hit the end stop and um, so what I figured out was that the belt wasn't straight as I mentioned earlier in the video so once I straightened that the wire bed could move back smoothly hit that trigger and that solved both problems and then the whole self test worked perfectly I did check the electronics first and I saw that everything was in place and that's when I had to kind of figure the other steps out so remember you always can figure these things out after that you do the XYZ test and what that does is it takes a little while going through each little probing point on the bed but it just checks the squareness and the right angles of your X and Y and Z and <coughs> if it's just slightly skewed it handles that in software mine was slightly skewed and it should print that absolutely fine then with the Z test my Z axis offset this is where you print the calibration code and it's just a uh, kind of a zigzaggy pattern um, and you just lower the z-axis as you print I had to take mine to minus 797 microns um, I think it was about that um, to get it printed perfectly but I've actually I've since raised that to I think about 730 um, and it seems to be printing well uh, the only thing I would criticize is that the test g-code for that could be a bit longer because you only have a, a few times to turn it and then check it and also it prints on the white lines of the peat bed and so it's hard to actually see how well they're sticking <coughs> if you printed just on the black side of it the heat bed it'd be a lot easier um, so again with the noise really noisy put it on something soft it makes such a big difference um, I've, I've got mine on my carpet now just on my floor it makes such a big difference it's ridiculous I still might change the wire bearings but we'll see if I can get any because it's a bit hard getting them in the UK the ones I wanted and also you can select silent mode and that makes everything go a bit quieter and I think it may print a bit slower I'm assuming it will but if you're doing big prints um, with a lot of movement and maybe heavier prints you may want to keep it on power mode just so it doesn't skip any steps or anything like that <coughs> so sorry lose my voice now so thanks for watching this um, I hope this helps you with some tips even if it's a bit of a long video just to go through some of the steps um, little tips that I found and may help you also and uh, so uh, please subscribe for more 3d printing videos and any more tips I can do and especially with the Prusa i3 mark 2 thanks for watching and I'll see you later